What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. I thought I'd try out a new series called Wisdom from the Continent, where I take African proverbs and discover how it parallels with African history. <laughs> By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and supporting this content. If you'd like access to full courses and sources, or you simply want to show your support, you may do so by clicking the Patreon link in the description box below. The African proverb I'll be using today is from the West African country of Guinea. For whatever reason, I couldn't find out the exact origin of the proverb concerning the ethnic group it came from, but maybe one of you guys will be familiar with it and let me know. The proverb goes as follows. Knowledge without wisdom is like water in the sand. Now, Guinea is a country in West Africa that has many different ethnic groups like all West African countries. Some of these groups include the Fulani, Mandinka, Susu, Kisi, Kipele, and some others. Most, if not all of these groups, are very familiar with the Sahara Desert. It would seem as though this proverb is ancient because, for example, the Fulani and the Mandinka were said to have come from a region much further north in the Sahara region, so perhaps it may be the place of origin for the proverb's inspiration. I think it's pretty interesting how they gave the example of sand swallowing up water. Anyway, to begin, I would like this to be a collective effort because everything is open to interpretation. I'll give you my take on the meaning of this proverb, but I think it's very important that you guys include your own so that we can all potentially learn from one another. In essence, staying true to the proverb itself. So what is this proverb trying to say? I believe the Africans from Guinea were trying to say that you can have all the knowledge and even intelligence in the world, but if you have no foresight or intuition or experience, it will be all for naught. Wisdom is knowing the relationship between things and how to navigate them for the most part. That comes largely through experience and being open to learn. Understanding that you don't know everything can be seen as the first step toward wisdom. The first event in Africa that came to mind once I read this proverb is the comparison between the Songhai Empire and the Kanem Brno Empire and their relationship with modern military technology. The Songhai were well aware of new military technology or modern warfare. They were not at all ignorant of guns. For whatever reason, they made little to no attempt at retrieving such weapons. On the other end, the Kanem Brno Empire under Idris Aluma certainly saw the value of upgrading his military force through partnerships and training with the Ottoman Empire. Along with their knowledge of superior military tactics, the Kanem Brno Empire took active steps to improve their military force. In other words, they had foresight and they understood the relationship between military upgrades and maintaining hegemony. These stark differences made a huge impact on the history of each empire. One was completely annihilated, and the other was the longest lasting empire in all of African history, and one of the longest lasting in the world, lasting from around the 8th century all the way to the 19th century. After the death of one of the greatest West African rulers, Askia Mohamed Touré, the Songhai Empire was shaken by dynastic struggles, and by 1591, it was way past its prime. The civil wars absolutely devastated the country, and the Moroccans saw an opportunity. That year, the Songhai army was defeated by the firearm-bearing forces of Morocco at the Battle of Tondibi near the Songhai capital of Gao. The collapse of Songhai was immediate. Moroccans occupied Gao, Timbuktu, and Jene, and established a local government at Timbuktu. The Moroccan victories all but destroyed Trans-Saharan trade. Law and order in the region collapsed totally. Later, the Mandinka, Touregs, Fulani, and the Mosai were raiding and pillaging trying to position themselves for power and the Moroccans couldn't get a stronghold over the region. Their only goal was to find gold, not stabilize the region or even consolidate their power. The collapse of Songhai caused the economic collapse of the entire region, thus beginning the dark ages of West Africa. Now, one can make the argument that due to dynastic disputes, the Songhai princes and regional lords did not have the time or the money to focus on the bigger picture the acquisition of modern military technology or, at the very least, preparing to deal with such a threat. The Moroccans crossed the Sahara Desert with an army, a feat deemed impossible 
defeating the ill-prepared Songhai forces. In many ways, the Songhai became like the proverb, water in the sand, absorbed in full by the Moroccan forces. In comparison, before the destruction of the Songhai state, the greatest Nigerian ruler Idris Saluma came to the throne of the newly invigorated Kanem Brno Empire. Almost immediately, he introduced many military strategies, including settled military camps with walls to protect his men. His tactics in war was to organize permanent sieges whereby his army would continually attack a particular section of an enemy's army to weaken their resistance. He also used a scorched earth policy in wars with his enemies. In his wisdom, the great Idris Saluma, shortly after his ascension, established diplomatic relations with the rulers of North Africa, especially Tripoli, and from them, he was able to obtain muskets and a band of expert Turkish musketeers who helped him train his men and decide the issues of some of his most serious battles. Taking advantage of the numerous caravans who came from North Africa with many Arab horses and camels for sale, he built a large and well-equipped cavalry. As a good tactician and soldier himself, he equipped his troops with arms and saw to their efficient training by the Turks. In this way, Idris consolidated his power and extended the borders of Kanem Brno. Idris was well prepared for any threat, foreign and domestic, and he ensured that his empire possessed modern weaponry and tactics. I personally think that if the Moroccans had attacked the Kanem Brno empire, they would have been in for a rude awakening, to say the least. Anyway, the Kanem Brno empire under Idris Luma can be seen as having wisdom and knowledge, adhering to the values of the Ghanaian proverb. On the other end, Songhai can be seen as exemplifying the ills of having knowledge with no wisdom. In our own lives, I think we should remember that we don't know everything, and so it would serve us well to humble ourselves and learn from the people and events around us. We can learn from history and acquire wisdom from keeping an open heart and an open mind. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Hey, hey.